All right, here we go with video 6.3, periodic trends, where we're going to take a look at different trends on or in the periodic table. Uh, once again, I recommend you pause, go get your periodic table, so you just have it there to look at while we're going through this. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about today is atomic radius. That's kind of dealing with the actual sizes of the atoms in different elements. And the actual definition of the atomic radius is one half of the distance between the nuclei of the same element when two atoms are joined. All right, so here's what that means. So uh, let's say these are two atoms of the same element and they're combined chemically. All right, and here's the nucleus of one and here's the nucleus of the other. And we say the distance from nucleus to nucleus and half of that which when you think about it is kind of similar to what you would normally know as a radius anyway. Now this is measured in picometers and there are 10 to the 12th picometers in one meter. So to get an idea of what that is, right? One, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. We'll put our commas here so you have an idea just how many picometers are in one meter. So there are a billion picometers in one meter. That's how small these atoms actually are. And we can look at some of these here, right? Hydrogen, the atomic radius is 30 picometers. Oxygen, 68. Go up to iodine is 140. But uh, still, even though it's almost five times the size of hydrogen, it's still incredibly tiny. Okay, so on the periodic table, we're going to think about these trends in atomic size. As you travel across a period, right, so I'll just do a quick little sketch of our periodic table. Here's hydrogen, here's helium. Okay, so as we travel across a period from left to to right, atomic radius generally decreases. So even though we're adding protons and usually adding neutrons and the mass is getting bigger, the radius is actually getting smaller. So that means if that's hydrogen, helium is small. There's an actual lithium, beryllium, etc., etc., etc. We're getting smaller as we go across. Now, why is that? Well, the increase in atomic number means an increase in the number of protons. And that greater positive charge in the nucleus has a stronger pull on the electrons. So you have the electrons that are around it are being pulled in more because there's more positive charge in the nucleus. The nucleus gets stronger and pulls in the electrons more. Now, as you travel down a group, atomic radius generally increases. So it means as it goes across, it gets smaller. But as you go down to the next principal energy level, to the next shell, you're putting a new shell around here, it's going to get bigger. And the reason for that is what we call the shielding effect. These inner shells, this inner shell, is kind of blocking the pull of the nucleus on the outer shells. So the nucleus is pulling more strongly on this inner shell, but because this inner shell is in the way, it's not able to pull quite as strongly on this outer shell. And that's the shielding effect. So if we look at a picture here, trends in atomic size. As you go across, the size generally decreases. That says size, sorry about the uh, glare. Generally decreases. As you go down in the group, from row to row to row, the size generally increases. Okay? And you're going to do or have already done, depending on where you've gotten to, what time you watch this video. Uh, lab and class, we're going to actually graph these, and you're going to see that the, as you go across, the size goes down, and you get to the next row, it does a big jump up, down, big jump up, down, etc., etc., and that's size. Okay, 
Before we move on to some other trends, now we have to finally talk about what ions are. And I know I kind of mentioned them in class a number of times and given some quick, simple definitions, but we haven't got into a lot of detail on it yet. So definition. An ion is an atom or a group of atoms with either a positive or a negative charge. And they form when electrons are transferred between atoms. So you'll have one atom give another atom an electron. So, for example, sodium and chlorine. Right, if you look on the periodic table, that sodium's all the way over here, chlorine's all the way over here, not quite a halogen. Right. So, sodium wants to be like a noble gas. Then I say not quite a halogen for chlorine. Sorry, chlorine is a halogen. It's not quite a noble gas. That's why I drew this other one here. So sodium wants to be like a noble gas. It wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell. So sodium wants to be like neon. So when it gives away one electron, it becomes like neon in its electron configuration. And it becomes positive because it gave an electron up. Now, chlorine wants to be like argon by gaining an electron. So sodium is very happy to give up an electron. Chlorine is very happy to take that electron. And chlorine becomes a negative ion. So sodium becomes a sodium ion. Chlorine becomes a chloride, C-H-L-O-R-I-D, ion. And then since opposites attract, they stick together make NaCl sodium chloride, but it's really Na plus stuck to a Cl minus. Now this sodium ion is a positive ion called a cat ion. The chloride ion is a negative ion called an anion. Where I remember it is anion, a negative Anion. Anion is how I remember it. Okay. Now what happens... Oops, sorry. Ionization energy is an important thing. It's the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. And that deals with how happy the atom is to give up an electron. The sodium is very happy to give up an electron, so it's going to have a lower ionization energy. Now, chlorine doesn't want to give up an electron. It wants to gain an electron, so it's going to have a higher ionization energy. It's going to be very difficult to pull an electron away from chlorine. You have to be really, really, really strong to do. Okay. Now, size of ions is another important factor. So here's a sodium atom, and when it loses an electron, it gives one up, the sodium ion is smaller, and that's because, right, the nucleus has 11 protons, so the nucleus have 11 pluses pulling on the minuses, but now what's it's given up an electron, right, now there's 11 protons, but now there's only 10 electrons, so the protons pull the electrons in that much more, and it shrinks. A negative ion is just the opposite. When you add an electron into the mix, right, this chloride ion, now instead of having 17 electrons, it's got 17 protons, it now has 18 electrons, and the protons don't pull quite so strongly on all of those electrons. So it gets bigger. So negative ions are bigger. Anions are bigger, these are important, and cations are smaller than their neutral counterparts. Okay, so now we can think about our trends in ionization energy. 
and they tend to decrease from top to bottom in a group. So these, as go down a group, the ionization energy tends to decrease. Okay, and that's because as the atomic radius increases, because right as you go down the group, the atoms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you add new shells, the nuclear charge in the center here doesn't have as strong a pull on these outer shells. So it's easier to take it away because it's further away from the nucleus, which is holding everything together. And ionization energy tends to increase from left to right in a period. And that's because that greater nuclear charge, right, as we go left to right, there's more protons in the nucleus, a greater nuclear charge is going to have a stronger pull on all the electrons. So if we look at our picture here, as we go across, ionization energy generally increases. As we go down in a group, the ionization energy generally decreases. Okay. Uh, go ahead and draw these arrows with ionization energy increases and ionization energy decreases off to the side on your reference table. All right, next is electronegativity. Definition. The electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons with when in a compound. And really what that means is how electron hungry it is. Once again, if we kind of sketch our periodic table over here. Right. Since everybody wants to be like a noble gas, these guys just need an electron or two to be like a noble gas. So they really want electrons. So they're very electronegative. They want an electron. These guys over here need to lose an electron to move back that way and be like a noble gas. So they have a lower electronegativity because they don't want electrons. They actually want to get rid of electrons. So electronegativity decreases from top to bottom within a group. As we go down the group, it's less electronegative. It doesn't want electrons so badly. But electronegativity increases from left to right across the period. Because right, these guys aren't very electronegative. These are because they really, really, really want electrons. So electronegativity increases from left to right and decreases from top to bottom. D E C. As it goes down in the group, the electronegativity decreases. All right, so that brings us to the end of this section as well as the end of this chapter. Uh, once again, as always, if you had trouble with stuff, go back and watch it again. Keep track of any questions you may have, and I will see you guys in school.